Are you 40 and older and your nagging back pain is keeping you from training legs? Well, stick around because I got a solution for you. Okay, so if you haven't tuned into my last video or you've been paying attention to my back injuries, you know that my back injuries have been caused from lifting way too much weight while not engaging my core and then putting too much stress on my lower back. And that has been a B-I-T-C-H for me. But I've came up with a solution, worked on my mobility, my core engagement, and now I am pain-free. I wanna share this with you and how you can avoid those things while still being able to build your legs. All right, I had the question before, can you build legs without squatting? Yes, you can. You just work all the other muscles individually. Exercise selection is gonna be your key. So what does it look like? We don't have to load the spine. We don't have to squat. We just have to choose exercises that are going to hit the hamstrings, hit the quads, and hit the glutes. That's basically it. So first things first, for me, I'm gonna obviously train quads and hamstrings while doing the seated hamstring curl or lying and then leg extensions. Now, doing seated hamstring curls is gonna put your back in a better position to help you avoid some of that pain from laying on your stomach. Now, if you don't have that option, here's what we can do. So a couple things, when we're setting up on our hamstring machine and we have back pain, this isn't back pain we're going to the gym and you're in pain at the gym. If that's the case, you wake up and you got back pain, stay your ass out of the gym, go see a physiotherapist or massage therapist, get something figured out before you start exercising. It's better that you heal first to a good degree and then you come back in to try and strengthen your lower back as well as the rest of the muscles you're trying to target. Now, when we're doing hamstring curls, we came to the gym and our back doesn't feel bad at all, but you know, like after a few sets, you're like, man, my back's pumped for no reason, right? We are going to engage the core the entire time. That is going to be key to make sure our lower back stays engaged as well too. But when we're going down on the hamstring curl, it's best that you don't just kind of like flop down and get yourself in and then get, you know, get your feet in this way and you're doing all this stuff, my back is doing whatever. And all, even right now, because of the this bench and the type of bench it is, there's gonna be stress on my lower back. That's why I like a seated hamstring curl a lot better than a lying hamstring curl. But if you don't have a seated hamstring curl, because some gyms don't have it, so the most important part is, is to support our lower back by giving us a little bit of help in the front. Most of you are gonna have a lying hamstring curl machine that's gonna have a little bit of like a drop off. It's gonna kind of be like this, and then it's gonna do this. And that's gonna kind of put your back in a better position anyway. But if you're stuck with one of these, like I am, we have to kind of make our way with it. So what are we gonna do? Well, you can roll up a, a mat, towel, whatever you have that can go right underneath your pelvis. So when you go into your position, again, we're gonna step in, you're going to engage your core right away because before we start doing anything, we wanna make sure our core is engaged right from the jump. You're gonna pull yourself in, get your feet positioned, and then you're gonna lower yourself and then reposition this where it's right by your pelvis. So it's gonna push your hips up a little bit higher to give you a little bit, to give you a better chance at keeping the pain and strain off of your lower back. Because not a lot of us are flexible enough to be flat here and to keep our hips driven in. Because again, the success of a lying hamstring curl is gonna be your ability to keep your hips in a extended position, meaning straight. We don't want this. If we get this, that is gonna put stress on your lower back. Doing the butt torque while you're doing hamstring curls. This equals, ow, my back hurts. This equals, my back's not hurting as much, but guess what? I can still do hamstring curls properly. Now, make sure we have something big enough that is going to help stabilize right by our pelvis, right here and here. And again, when we're doing our lifts, we're gonna do them to the tune of a nice, slow eccentric. So we can feel the muscle, make the rep actually harder, put the stress on the hamstrings, not everywhere else. If we use weight that's too much to handle, we're gonna incorporate other muscle groups main our lower back, and then we're back to square one. So lying hamstring curls, first exercise you can do, can be second, but either way, first one I'm gonna do, lying hamstring curls. I'm gonna brace myself through my core, walk myself on this bench, set myself down, adjust my pad so it's right underneath my waist, and then from here, or my pelvis, and then I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, tighten my core, and from here, strong from the torso, strong from legs, and breathing, and controlling it down. And I would only come up to where you're comfortable because you're not gonna be able to come all the way up maybe. That might be what's causing some of your back pain. Do your best to sit in the range where you don't have any pain here. And again, 
The success of this is gonna be your ability to keep your hips extended while your core is engaged, protecting our lower back while we do our reps. So avoid this. Cause just doing that, I can feel my lower back. Keep it nice and slow. Throwing it down. And make sure we choose a weight that will force us to use the hamstrings only while using a little bit of stabilization from the other muscle groups to help aid this to be an efficient lift. Now we got the hamstrings figured out, what's next? Look, guess what? We can do quads. Now also doing leg extensions, your back really isn't in that bad of a position. But when people do this, they seem to get a little too carried away. Number one, we could be back like this too much, which happens. We could be arching like this or rolled like this. I see all the time people are doing a good job of actually doing the rep. They got their hands here, they're pulling themselves in, but they're like this. And though we're not getting any compression in our lower back because we'll there's really nothing challenging a lower back. Our posture in itself is putting us in a disadvantageous position. I wanna make sure that in every lift that I do, my posture looks like this. Posture up. Pretend there's a hook on your chest and you're being hung by the hook on your chest. That's how you should look on every movement. Squatting, deadlifting, benching, pulling. Everything looks like this and your core is gonna be engaged. Again, we have that buddy that's gonna come around and punch in the stomach, we're ready for him. Lock yourself in, even if we're sitting back, we're still up, we're core is engaged. And from here, pushing. Now, if you're on a bench like mine, where it's like there's a bunch of space behind here, so if anything, make sure that you can adjust the seat so that your back is flush on to the bench and there's no gaps there. So from here, now my back is flat on and I can grip from here, pull myself in, chest is gonna be up, core is gonna be tight, and I'm gonna just flex till my quads are completely flex all the way up, controlling it down, letting it stretch. And every rep that we do, we should feel this getting tight. If you can't do this while engaging your core, and feeling your core consciously being in the moment and present, then this weight is too heavy. That means we're just hucking it up and we're just hoping, dear God, that just by doing this, our ugh, quads are gonna get work and our core is gonna be tight. We wanna minimize the excessive moving in our torso. So strong torso, tight core, floor two core, lock yourself in, chest up, flexing the quads on the way up, controlling it down, Nice stretch to the bottom, breath in, and breathing from here. And now we have two obvious exercises that don't necessarily put too much stress on your lower back. Now, what's next? Come with me. Hey, what's up guys? My Iron Shepherd's Iron Beanies are out right now in camel, charcoal, and gray. And they're moving fast. So guys, hit the link in the description below and get yours now. All right, next up on the list we have leg press. Now again, we can avoid loading our spine, and that's what we wanna do when it comes to training your legs. How do I get around loading my spine and still be able to successful leg day without doing squats? You know, whether it's a hack squat, goblet squat, front squat, back squat, we wanna avoid those things because they're gonna put us in a position that's gonna give us a lot more stress to our lower back. So we use the leg press. And leg press is gonna be primarily more of quads and some glutes and some hamstrings but we're still getting the best of all the worlds wrapped in together in this machine. Now, the biggest important thing for this is to make sure that we are on this back pad here and we don't have a bunch of space, meaning you don't want your back to be sitting like this when we're pressing. Because even though this is only gonna be really loading our hip and not necessarily our spine, we don't wanna be here where our butt's coming off at the very bottom. So when it comes to your range of motion, your mobility, you're gonna make sure that you, number one, set up the back part, the back plate, so that you're in any better position to make sure your back stays flat. If this is too far down and you come down like this, there's gonna be more opportunity for your butt to roll and then now we're getting some compression on our spine and we wanna avoid that. So make sure that we put our butt right in the back of the seat, pull yourself in, again, engage your core. Keep your feet at a place where you can get a good amount of knee over toe. 
We want some hip and the flexion. And if that's so far you can go down, that's great. We're only gonna go as far as we can when our butt remains in the seat. Do not go lower so that your butt comes off like this and we have space here. We don't want our butt to be like this because then we have back problems. But if we do this right, butt in the back of the bench, pull yourself in, chest up, core engaged, flexing the quads on the way down, getting to a great place here of hip and knee flexion, and then pressing up and controlling the weight on the way down, and making sure that we keep our entire foot on this plate when we're pushing. So all contacts, all points of contact, heels and toes, knees going over my toes, nice knee flexion, hip flexion from here. The glutes are somewhat loaded, the hamstrings are eccentric loaded, the quads are about to be concentric loaded and we can just press the weight up, controlling the weight each way. And I suggest not doing any kind of pause reps because again, that's gonna be a little more stressed down here. So just a good full range of motion of coming down fluently and back up. And again, choose a weight that's gonna load the muscle and not force you to use your lower back. All right, we've isolated hamstrings, quads. We put them all in one in the leg press. And now one last exercise to really target the glutes. How are we gonna do that? Well, guess what? We're gonna do a split squat, stationary lunge with a little caveat. We're gonna raise up the front so we can get a little more depth so we can hit the glutes a little more. Again, guys, we're like, how do I grow my butt if I can't squat? Well, squatting is just hip and knee flexion. A split squat, same thing. You're just splitting the squat, hip and knee flexion without loading the spine. So we're gonna do either dumbbell or body weight, depending on your fitness level. You're going to set yourself up to make sure it's high enough that we get a little more depth. We want a maximum amount of hip and knee flexion. The reason why this is a good exercise to do, other than not loading your spine, is that it's still very functional and we can keep a neutral spine by using dumbbells. We don't wanna load the spine, we're trying to avoid that. So while we're here, we're gonna set a step back a bit and just place your foot back so we're high in that toe. My knee's gonna travel over the toe and my torso is gonna take the same angle as my shin. There's we're gonna have a good amount of hip and knee flexion and neutral spine. We're not like this, because we wanna avoid this, right? Because we're doing this as a step up. When we're doing front foot elevated reverse lunge, we wanna make sure we extend that hip, keep your core engaged. Your hands are gonna be at the side or on your waist if you have any weights or it'll be at your side if you have dumbbells. And then we're gonna push the hips back and the knees gonna go forward. Touching the ground while you're letting your knee still travel forward and going all the way down, staying from here, stretching the bottom and then coming back up and then doing it again. And your rep should look like this. You can change the height of the risers based on your fitness level. If you're a beginner, guess what? You're going from here. If you're a little more advanced, you're like myself, and you decide that you know, you're gonna not gauge your core for years, and you're stuck with managing back pain, this is how you're gonna do it. You have enough strength, we wanna continue to strengthen our glutes, our quads and hamstrings, while keeping a nice neutral spine. Our torso is gonna match the same angle as our shin. So we don't want this, because that hurts my back and my hips. We want this and up. And we can still use that back foot to help with stabilization on the way down and coming back up. But to get the most out of this exercise, we wanna let the glutes do as much as we can, tighten the core on the way down and let the glutes get loaded for full hip and knee flexion and then driving the weight back up and flexing your glutes, quads, and hamstrings. Do the other way so you can see it. Stepping back, down, down, and then up. Put this workout together however you want. Could be just what's available in your gym. But again, here's a way we can still build glutes, hamstrings, and quads with having nagging back pain or a back pain or a old injury that just keeps coming back. Remember, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing some type of tissue work, seeing a massage therapist or 
a physiotherapist to help mitigate some of the issues and work on your mobility and your core engagement. That's something you'll be doing for the rest of your life as I am too, but it's not gonna stop us from building the nice set of legs that we wanna build. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys try this at home or in your gym. Let me know in the comment section below. And for more videos like this, let me know what exercise you want me to go over that might be causing you pain or that you need to maybe avoid or just maybe need to make a couple of tweaks. Let me know in the comment section below. So next time, you guys know how it is. Iron Sharpens Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.